Hello and welcome, heroes, to the Crit Academy. Dungeon Masters, do you ever find yourself in the need of a quick quest hook or short adventures? With these 50 notice board quests, you will always have something ready when your characters decide to bob instead of weave. <laughs> Bob's nice. He's a good guy. Uh, I, am your <laughs> I am your host, Justin. I'm your co-host, Ian. I'm your co-host, Brandon. Oh, we are really excited today. We hope to inspire you with creative content that you can bring with you on your next adventure. I am super excited for to cover this de, uh, supplement, which was developed by Drop the Die uh, with Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition tabletop game in mind. But when they were writing it, their goal was to give only a framework for a potential quest players uh, could or players and DMs could use to involve themselves in. Um, so this pretty much means that the system is actually setting agnostic which is really really great making it a powerful tool in any dungeon masters toolbox <laughs> Indeed. so with that um as we were going through this first of all let's talk about some of the merits of having something like this uh in your toolbox right yep i mean have you guys ever had players go a direction you weren't expecting always yeah every time all the time <laughs> happens, happens all the time so being able to say okay um, they're not interested in these three, two or three hooks that I tossed out. So you have someone else make them for you. Have somebody else make them <laughs> for you. <laughs> well, and it's always good because in a major city specifically, there's always going to be those situations where the um, the there, there's somebody looking for people to do some sort of work, and it's usually on like a tavern notice board or job board or whatever whatever you want to call it. So. Um, when you get into those situations where you can say, shit, I don't have any, they want it. They're not interested in this. What am I going to do? You say, well, you can always go and check the job board. The job board. Yeah. Um, here's some pre range adventures you can put together ahead of time. <laughs> right. Right. And there's, there, and it's really cool because of that. So, um, now this has a bunch of different, uh, uh, features in it. Obviously, there's 50 of them. We can't cover all of them on the show, but we're going to delve into some of the examples that they give and go from there. Consider that also that each Nuzzler hook may lead to a much different long running quest. And their modular nature, I think, only doubles down on this and the fact that you can go a lot of very different directions with them, which shows you how malleable they are potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's one of your. Doing origami, and you go to make a crane, and you have to make a gator instead. Because <laughs> you done that so We need to go back to step four. I uh, I made a rock. <laughs> now, what is for, this? Uh, it's for, a rock now. for example, with, with all that, uh, one could take a notice to investigate a missing child and become embroiled with corrupted city officials who have begun kidnapping children and selling them to nearby hags to prevent the city's lifeblood apples what the fuck blood apples blood that, apples that from suffering apple in the wake of a magic. harsh winter <laughs> god damn <laughs> see so that even in that example that's really cool because it tosses quite a different a few different uh things at us right um you've got an investigation out the bat because kids have gone missing so you're gonna ex ex uh, do the the exploration yep. and lore aspect of the pillars although i suppose it's a comma after life blood so <laughs> life blood apples from suffering yeah. <laughs> I think it's meant to indicate the city's main export is apples, apples? but yeah. our brain went to like blood apples. I'm like, so you plant kids underneath the apple tree and <laughs> use that as like a the city's life blood, the exportation of apples. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's really <laughs> funny. I, I mean, look at that. Just right there, because we know it's a single punctuation, we went two very different directions. And, 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 that's, <laughs> and that's what makes uh, not just uh, 50 notice boards great, but any sort of supplement that covers this sort of format. Um, it comes with a lot of good, <laughs> juicy, like an apple. Get it? Juicy? Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, juicy stuff that you can uh, pull and fill in your 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 game. So, so what do we got? We got apple juice. We got apple butter. We got apple slices. We got apple preserved sauce. rifles. We got sliced apples. <laughs> so Apple salsa? Also... Apple pie. God, you guys are making me hungry. I'm apple already crumb. Stop it. Apple, is, apple crumb. Oh, huh. Is everything you saw with the apples? We're in the orchard, sir. What do you expect? <laughs> so, um, so likewise, it should be just as likely that a a notice board job leads to practically nothing. 
such as a simple misunderstanding. Honestly, these are some of my favorites. Um, a notice uh, from a mercenary that states his equipment was stolen may have had a drunken night and then left his armor at the blacksmith to be repaired and just forgot about it. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and maybe the, there's even more to it where he fell down the stairs and was injured and his stuff got all dinged and d- dented. So it wasn't stolen. It just was dropped off to be repaired. And he had a few too many ales and forgot. So that right there gives us a whole lot to, to deal with, because even with that one little set of line, you can easily go, oh, yeah, uh, uh, Jacques. Yeah, I saw him fall down the end stairs last night. Got a big old. <laughs> <laughs> a big old, <laughs> I've got a big old uh, ding in his chest plate. Uh, last I saw, he was w- weaving and wobbling over towards the blacksmith, you know? So, uh, that, <laughs> stumbling to the blacksmith. And so you can even, uh, even say, yeah, I saw him heading that direction and then talk to people. So it kind of creates a chain mm-hmm. of events with just a few lines of text, which uh-huh. is why I think these are awesome. So, um, but... Yeah. Or like I said, in a pest budget, not one the job board was wanted. An assistant in my alchemical lab who understands that sh- Mix Kipley does not mean put the cork in the bottle and shake. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Um, so with that, we've chosen a, a few of our, our favorites out of this uh, collection of 50. Uh, so we picked three, obviously, in addition to the few examples we've given. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them and some of the directions that we would take them because... Part of D&D is taking inspiration from something that somebody gives you and seeing how far you can take it, right? Yep. So right off the bat, I want to talk, say that I love this first one because it specifically says it's written in Dwarvish. On the job board is written in Dwarvish. So obviously, A, he doesn't know how to write common. Or B, he doesn't want people. B, he doesn't want anybody <laughs> yeah. that's not a dwarf, right? Yeah. Um, or somebody that can't speak his language. So that, just in the bit where it says in dwarvish, gives us a lot to, oh, shit. Give, gives us a lot, gives us a lot to, oh, shit. <laughs> Battery, hang on a second. Hang on a second here. Oh, shit. There we go. My bad. <laughs> um, forgot to plug in my, my laptop. Uh, so the first, in, the in dwarvish gives us a lot to, to go with uh, right out the bat in I like that because we can take it in any different direction. For me, it, I imagined it was he doesn't want anybody that didn't speak dwarves because he doesn't speak anything else. Ian mentioned he just might hate everybody else that's not a dwarf. What do you think? Those are the only two conclusions I can come to. But still, okay. Way to add to or, that. Appreciate it. Well, okay, well I was trying to say it was he doesn't want somebody <laughs> who doesn't speak dwarves to read it. To be involved in it. That's true. Um, and so then it opens up. It says, Klansman, heed my warning. So he obviously cares about his people because he assumes the person reading this is what? Yep. Dwarfish. A dwarfish. Yeah. So now think about how when uh, Martin Luther nailed his 95 pieces to the door, he actually put it in there in Latin so nobody could read it, but then some merchants translate it from Latin to German. <laughs> <laughs> and di- distribute it among everybody. That's kind of how it happens. Yeah. Um, it says <laughs> the owner of the Bright Kettle Tea House is a dwarf hating maniac. That's part of the reason why he probably wrote it in Dwarfish. So he gave us, not only did he give us a place, of which has got a cool name, the Bright Kettle Tea House, but also we now have a racist maniac involved. <laughs> or maybe two. or Yeah, or more, more than one. Ooh, I like that. A whole family of them. Uh, I'll drink to the dwarf who posted it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so uh, Lorista Herkel, the proprietress, has been responsible for no fewer than three missing dwarves that ignored my warnings and took sup at her business. I wish she doesn't get drunk one other way. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a that maybe that could be the misunderstanding, right? He thinks they're disappearing, but they just get so tanked and hammered by her stuff that they just wander away and never come back. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Um, and if you got any ideas in chat about how which directions you would take any of these, please let us know. Um, it says. I know what she does with them or where they end up, or I, I do know not what she does with them or where they end up, but gone as sure as a candle's flame. What's been snuffed out. So, uh, so he's he, just assuming that he's yes. she's killing his friends. So he yeah. doesn't, he really doesn't know. He says, if you have the mind to see to the bottom of it, find me outside the place. Any waking moment, Moradin guide you brush gold spinner. Yep, translate with the investigation. See how it has anything to do with it. Turn out the ship captain was Shanghai drunk people. 
<laughs> <laughs> I like that. So she has nothing to do with it. They're getting drunk. They're going out by the by the um, by the docks. By the docks, and there is a uh, a, a slave master who's just scooping them up because they're all tanked and can't walk. <laughs> Or he just say, "Hey, you want some more ale? I got some." They're like, "Yeah!" And they just waddle out, and they—they by the time they're they're sober, they they've been kidnapped. <laughs> and, and this lady's not even involved at all. Um, that's really interesting. What do you think, Brandon? What, well, she's super involved in using uh, her her brew is actually a potion, turning everyone into like mice or something. Or it might have a Sweeney Todd thing going on here. Yeah. Okay. I can. Oh God. <laughs> I, I have not seen Sweeney Todd. You want some of my meat pies? <laughs> you haven't seen Sweeney Todd. What part of I have not seen that didn't you get? The whole thing. You need to watch it. <laughs> I have not seen Sweeney Todd. Oh, my God. Sorry. Mm, meat pies. <laughs> meat pies. That sounds gross. Um, so, they're, they're, they're delicious. delicious. They're not human. <laughs> so, there's, so there's a couple different ways we can take this, and I kind of like that because we potentially have a racist. Maybe she's not involved. This guy suspects she's involved. She, uh, um, It really goes a lot of different ways, and I think that that uh, is something uh, – a, 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 that's what makes these unique. I think I also love that it gives us an NPC, a couple NPC names too, that we can pull up to fill a fish out, f- flesh out our worlds. Um, because maybe you need a town. You could pick one of these. It gave us a name. It gave us some important NPCs and some events that are going on. Yep. That's fucked up. Getting bad thing, but they could be, uh, encountering some that charms them to dig or mine nonstop until they die. Oh, that is hot. I like that a lot. I mean, just one simple quest hook, we went in so many directions very fast. Yes, and that's kind of the the point that we're trying to trying to make with some of these. Uh, Ooh, that really makes a difference. If you do pre make some quests ahead of time, maybe you make more than one for a job posting, and you roll for which one you you you, you run. I like that, especially if you run lots of games for lots of people all the time. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> all right, who wants to, who want, who's oh, got the next one. one there? I do. My daughter has signed up with the Blazing Fist Mercenaries. Oh, that was a mistake. Cool name. Uh, they fought a big <laughs> battle against some inhuman creatures outside of town. And I just know the worst happened. I can feel it in my bones. She's not come home or sent word. The bodies are still out there in the sun. People are too scared to go leave them to rest because those creatures are still out there. Any cell sword that helps me find her in that mess and lay her to rest can have her dowry and my prayer of safety for as long as I draw breath. Makana or La. Okay, I like this one a lot. So my daughter signed up to be a Blazing Fist mercenary and uh, that's in, that's in uh, Never Winter, Waterdeep. Yep. Was it Waterdeep or Never Winter? Didn't say it. City name. No, but the, the, blazing, the fist. blazing Fist. Where were we in uh, Avernus? That oh, city. What city um, was that? Baldur's Gate? No. I think it was Baldur's Gate. It was Baldur's Gate, yeah. Yeah. And Baldur's Gate. So now we're building off a specific setting in this case, which I think is really good, especially if you like it. And now we've got a concerned dad, right? Yep. But we don't know the conditions. Or mom. mom. Well, McCon. Yeah, I guess McCon is probably a female, huh? Maybe. It could be. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks. We'll go with that. I did. I didn't do that. (laughs) Um, So so we got some good (laughs) stuff here. And it says, uh, they fought a big battle against some inhuman creatures outside of a town. Um, doesn't say what it is. Which gives you a lot of options right there. Especially if you've got a campaign theme going on already, um, which it is great. Could be orcs, could be zombies, could be uh, various undead, could be some otherworldly creatures. There's a list! Yeah, and you can and, and and that also gives you a reason to expand upon some ideas that you things you may not have used before, which I think is really cool. Ooh, or a uh, uh never mind. <laughs> That ended quick. Or a non judged slide. There we go. <laughs> ah, okay. I like that. What about you, Brandon? Well, I'm looking at this and reading and saying, the bodies are still out there in the sun. And people Ooh. are too scared to go lay them the rest. And those creatures are still out there. What if the creatures aren't above ground? Oh, some graboid shit right there, man. Yeah. Purple, oh, I like that. Purple worms. Purple, purple worms. worms. Oh, yes. Nice. Those ant kegs. Big giant uh, insectoid things that pop out of the ground. And, oh, I like that. So... Um, so we can even expand on this uh, uh, even more. Uh, she's not come home or sent word. So this suggests that she's always sending word, right? Mm. So you could even, as a dungeon master, write up a few uh, short um, messages home to flesh out this person who's missing, uh, depending on how you want that character to behave. Or the person's not dead. They just can't send letters home for one reason or another. 
That's also a good one. I like that. Like if they plane shift or a toss through a portal or kidnapped or what have you. <laughs> Stuck on Ravnica. They're all, they're also <laughs> you can watch our bi-weekly uh, podcast of plane shifters where our players have accidentally ended El Terrell and themselves in Ravnica. Sorry. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Well, yep. okay. Uh, or, the, the other one was that they're mercenaries. Yep. So they may not even be around in that specific area anymore. They could be like hundreds of miles away. Mm-hmm. Or maybe the postman got shanked. Or the postman got shanked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. It is interesting. Go ahead. And getting bad things says, might not be a thing that was fought outside of town. Concerned father could just be sending you after her to bring her back home after she ran off with a lover he doesn't approve of. Ooh, I love that. And they joined the mercenary group together. Maybe he was like a or maybe, maybe they were like a mercenary. A huh? Maybe he was a mercenary. Ooh. And he said, come with me because I'm leaving. Okay. I like that. So this is already going some interesting ways. Some it does touch on the shit. fact that the people are too scared to lay them to rest. So there is there is a, a potential battle here. There is, you know, disaster um and something to be addressed, but maybe that's the start of it. Um she's not there. And maybe let's go with the graboid thing. Maybe she's been taken. Maybe wow. she's you know, uh, <laughs> waiting to come out the other side of a, a purple worm. You know, there's a lot you can do with this as a dungeon masters. And it does say that any uh, cell swords that, you know, help the the m- mother or whoever this is find them um, in that mess and help can help lay her to rest, we'll have her dowry. So that expands our quest options even more, right? Because mm-hmm. what's to say is going to be in the dowry. To me, that instantly screams uh, family heirlooms, right? Yep. Uh, or, Ga- or Garland says, or she was a mercenary the entire time, but when her father found out, she dragged her lover into the mercenary life. Ooh, mm. these are good. I love this. It's a lot going there. Yeah, and but, but that's lot. the point of these, right? Is yeah. they're mm-hmm. only like five sentences long, but there's so much packed into them if we just think about how we would approach it. There's a reason why they're vague. Yes, <laughs> it, and that's the kind of, you say vague, but they're specific and vague at the same time. It gives oh, you a so very weird. specific <laughs> scenario. It just doesn't tell you the details of that scenario, which allows us the versatility to go with it in any direction. I can see myself using these same job hooks and ending up with different adventures every time. Oh yeah, which is really great. Um, and I, I'm really hung up on the draw, dr- dowry thing. I think that could be a lot of fun, especially if it uncovers something. Like maybe they aren't interested in this. Oh, a dowry. I don't care about that. But maybe as the DM, you decide, well, that dowry contains a artifact, a magical weapon or something that's like, you know, an heirloom that none of them know how to use. Or maybe it's a cow. Or maybe it's a oh, cow. Oh, God, that would be hilarious. <laughs> a magic cow. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a magic cow, just a cow. Boo. Well, I guess that would make sense for like farmers and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Because that's what they do. Their dowries are sheep and clothing and, and stuff like that. So, <laughs> anyway, <Big> Beth. Uh... <laughs> Where's that? She's out back. What are we gonna do with that? Uh, that's, that's a good month's worth of food, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> or or a uh, creature of burden carrying your shit. All right, uh, I think that'll oh. do it. What what? Uh, Zents Waterdeep. Yeah, we you were, you were talking about the Blazing Fist. Yeah, that just popped my head. Yeah, uh, yeah the yeah, Zentarum yeah. or Waterdeep. Okay, and then the Blazing Fist are in uh, Baldur's Gate. So, uh, and Brandon, you've got one here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? <laughs> yes, those who appreciate the finer things, antiques, magical items, Ooh, paintings, yes. and masterwork jewelry, uh, should attend the Oud Mysteriri. What I the? would say that's how you say that. It's a gala. Mysteriri gala. Hmm. Open from sundown to midnight until the end of the 10 day. Entry fee is 50 gold. And uh, those interested in employment as staff or security may reach Stathos Zvet. Zvet. From sun up to midday at the gala's entryway. Payment is 5 gold per person per day, 15 gold at the end of the 10 day, should no complications arise during the festivities. Uh, sincerely, Stathos Zvet. Oh, I like this one. Or. <laughs> One thing this can actually be used for is what your kids are doing during, during your downtime. Ooh. All that your money. Oh, that's interesting. And then you roll to see if something happened or did not happen. That's cool. I like that. So let's uh, let's break this down. Those who, So you're going to a gala, right? They're basically showing off all these objects, right? Yay. Um, and it's open from sundown to, sun, to midnight. Um, and so we have a time frame and a timeline that we can work with. So as a dungeon master, we can say, okay, I want some events to happen. They're going to happen on this particular timeline. And it's going to happen almost regardless of what the PCs do, right? right? Unless they directly impact that particular event. So that's something that I don't see a lot of. 
Yep, the following 10 day, when you like get picked up the local newspaper, a fire breaks out due to a brawl, the Ad Mysteria of Gali. <laughs> What's I? Oh, okay. That's cool. Where'd you get that from? No, I'm saying because they didn't take the job. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so, you, so, so you got to me. So part of the thing that's really cool with this is because there's a timeline, if the players don't take any action, you can utilize that to say this event occurs. Um, it also talks about masterwork jewelry. You know what that says to me? Uh, Thieves. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking that. I was like, why would you want to have a gala with all this stuff from sundown to midnight? That's a terrible time to have a gala. <laughs> like, right, like right there between noon and like three. <laughs> dark everywhere. Yeah. I just pictured as a possible anti thief device. The jewelry are set on top of like various podiums or stands. Mm -hmm. So podiums or stands are mimics. <laughs> oh, dude, that's hot. So when they go to grab it, they touch it and they're stuck to it. Guardian mimics. Oh, and it, that's amazing. And it eats them. <laughs> I, need, I need this now. I need this event in my life. Because I think that's awesome. That's what you get for stealing a schmuck. <laughs> so, so let's go. Let's go a little farther. The fee to enter is what fifty. That is gold. So much for most people. That's it a lot. So much, and because of that, a lot of people won't be able to just get in. But I think this is a perfect opportunity for the characters who have uh, the magic spell to alter self and masters of the disguise kit and voice manipulation. This right. whole scene really allows that. Um, alter ego type, you know, rogue or thief to really shine uh, in it's their. It's uh... gonna be a gold mine. It yeah. is because with fifty gold as an extra fee, you can automatically assume that it's all gonna be high class. Yeah, yeah. everyone in there, which means they're gonna be wearing jewelry too. Like, what do they say the economics were that a gold piece is how much a uh, peasant makes in a, in a month or something like that? Like a week, I think. But yeah, yeah, which just says how expensive uh, uh th th this is to enter. So, Shit. old Henny says, "Is an event to keep an eye on the rogue." Paladin Odin intensifies. Garwin says <gasps> the event is designed to capture thieves. The town has been having a problem with them, with the Thieves Guild, and they organize this as a trap. Garwin, this is awesome. You need to get on writing books. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, getting bad at things says the gala is actually there to show off the mimics, not the bling. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and you can tell when the thief tries to grab something because you hear it. Ah! Yep. Okay. <laughs> Yep, it turns out the nobles and the spirit type are mimic breeders. And this is like, oh my their, god, and this is their show to display them. <laughs> that that, that, that <laughs> writes itself. The guest the gal is a dog show for mimics. <laughs> oh my god, that's fantastic. <laughs> See how well my mimic takes so, homework. So let's, <laughs> so let's talk about that. So they're interested in employment as uh, staff and security uh, can reach out to this person. What if they don't tell you that? Like, I want to stick to the mimic thing because this is awesome. <laughs> and they don't tell and you. And they don't tell mimic. you. They just say, don't touch anything. Don't bump into anything. Don't do anything. And you know one player is going to be like, oh, touch. And then they're going to get stuck. Because <laughs> for those who don't know, the mimic's uh, body is super sticky. Uh, and it gets you get stuck when you touch it. So it basically leaves you in a grapple. Oh, uh, okay. Go around the exhibit. Touch, touches the podium. It's like a bunch of eyes open the it. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> what I think would be funnier is the, the actual realization of everything. They're like they touch it and they get stuck. Like oh, what the? And it looks at them like you say, and they go, "Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! They're everywhere!" Oh my god, that's good. That's the backup security uh, system. <laughs> getting that sense, I would be that player. <laughs> so for me, this is a really great one, and this just goes to show how versatile these things are. Once we started tossing around ideas, it just built on itself, and I think that's really what makes a great. Um, short quest hook and, and in this case job posting or notice board quest or the whole thing is a trap for adventurers so they can participate in games for the wealthy <laughs> death games Ooh. <laughs> dude i may have watched squid game this past week <laughs> you're, you're me. Good show. all right so we're running out of time here so i want to get to this last one um this is actually one of my favorites believe it or not it's also the shortest it has written in parentheses commoner scribbles so once again we're targeting not uh we're coming close to a very specific language or details that are unique to a particular person so <laughs> the spelling the nope. spelling is horrible by the way <laughs> it says oh no bio master i uh beg a year my youngster child's are shaking like a hot like a fear i cannot pay you but not for the prayer in the place to lay your head for the rest of uh, your life help me with the little one x in a different uh, uh, script. 
His name's Hanbin. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> uh, so it's really hard to read because it's broken. It's very badly broken. <laughs> but basically, it says um, his kid is shaking uh, like a hot fire. He's got uh, fever. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's 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 sick. Um, but he obviously can't write himself because it says shows in a different hand and it's signed with this person's name. Uh, and it's all discombobulated. No, noble is N O B I L <laughs> like, and, um, like fire is in, you know, fire is spelled F Y R E. So even this little bit of scribbling brings about the personality that this character has. Um, and it's really interesting in it being on the job board suggests that this person probably doesn't have any money. Um, they probably have no reward. You notice it doesn't actually say anything about a reward. So if anybody takes us, they're going to be taking it. It doesn't need to be a reward. Yep. Why? Why? Because look at the context of the words. I cannot pay ye, not but a pay payers probably supposed to say prayer. That's what I think. <laughs> because it was they can't say. spell uh, p- prayer and a place to lay your head for the rest of your life. Because the rest of your life is when you meet him. What do you mean? He kills you. He kills you. Oh my god, that's ingenious! He does it on purpose. He's an assassin! (laughs) (laughs) I give you a place to lay the head for the rest of your life. And then when you're sleeping, you're attacked in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. Uh, Oh, thank you for typing that out. My kid has a fever. Did you try moving them away from the fireplace? Oh, God. <laughs> it just turns out he's really stupid. No, let's go back to the assassin thing. That's so much. That's so cool. Not because I'll like the old blood jump over the punch. Right? It's like, Doctor, it hurts everywhere I touch. What's wrong with me? Your finger's broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this finger. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every day that hurts. Um, so uh, the, 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 the thing that's really cool about this is I can totally see like the Zentarum or an assassin's guild uh, plea. Uh, Yanking on the heartstrings of the do gutters and using it to set up an ambush. Hey, come here. I like, oh one. my God, this is <laughs> awesome. Anyways, obviously, you can go a long way with all these different notice boards. Yeah. Um, mm. I absolutely love this product. I consider you checking it out. Drop the die, really hit the ball out of the park with this one. Um, to my understanding, they might have actually released a second one too, if I recall. So, um, is there anything else you guys want to say about notice boards before we, uh, Move on. Any other benefits I, I, aside from what we've already discussed? Uh, this, I've heard a lot of supplements, but this one by far is probably on my favorites list yeah. because yeah. it's so hard to come up with stuff off the top of your head when you're like, oh, they don't want to go over here. They don't want to go over here. Go look at the job board. Yeah, I got some something for you. Yeah, I like it. Didn't you re- you read one? You read one and dropped one in the fa- Facebook <laughs> Facebook page that had me backed <laughs> yes. it up. You remember what it said? Yes, oh. it was. Uh, uh, oh uh, yes, it was uh, Helm's Helm. It's a uh, blacksmith who makes armor. And he says, "Hey, are you an adventurer? Would you like some gold? Um, come earn a week's worth of gold uh, for standing at the wrong end of my crossbow for one minute." <laughs> it's because he's he's testing his he's armor, testing but his he equipment. needs he needs a dummy. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I think that <laughs> will do it for our main topic today, you guys. Uh, 50 notice board quests. You can find a link in the thing down here uh, below um, if you want to pick it up and support Drop the Dice content. Uh, please do. If not, you've got some samples here that you can run with. 